Hello and welcome. My name is Gar, and I will be your host for this session. If you are a regular viewer of the channel, you may notice that I seem to be in a pretty good place as far as flywheels go. Um, I'm not going to say that I have the most powerful flywheel blasters, but uh, I probably, I think I'm in a, a pretty good place for, for flywheelers. Don't really need anything that's more powerful than what I have for the events that I attend. So, I thought that I would look back at Springer and Springer-related things. Um, my currently most powerful Springer is my Chronomag, and it's pretty nice. And hopefully, if all works out, I'll get a chance to try it out at an actual Nerf War in a couple of weeks. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I started this long shot project quite some time ago and I was thinking it would be really nice to be able to finish it. So, I've said this in previous videos, and I'll say it again, basically this, uh, this channel isn't necessarily intended to portray things that are revolutionary, brand new things that you've never seen before. A lot of the stuff that I'm doing is going to be tried and true, but uh, as long as I'm doing these things, I figure I may as well film them, and you know, maybe they'll be helpful to some people, maybe they'll be interesting to some people. So, first... Uh, oh, first note is I had already removed one of the uh, bipod nubs uh, previously, and I think mostly I was I was thinking of uh, maybe just streamlining over that because I didn't I don't like how it looks with no bipod. But after that, I purchased uh, one of the pump grip kits. Uh, this one's made by Worker F ten five five five. It's three D printed. Um, it does make the swish swish sound, so that's kind of a bummer, but uh, it seems like a pretty nice kit. This is the one that requires cutting, and so I would need to cut this anyway, but I'd already done it on one side. Um, let's see, what else? In addition to the, in addition to the, uh, the pump kit, I have a, uh, a mag release lever that I designed in Tinkercad and this should allow it to be ambidextrous when using full-size mags. Um, since this project was started, I have now been tinkering, of course, with short darts, short dart mags. And uh, for the long term, I'm not really sure what darts I'll be using it, but I figure there's a good chance I'll be ending up using it with short darts. Um, so it'd be nice to have a breech that will support both long and short. Um, when I started this, I, I figured I was just going to go with stock breech. I wasn't really worried about super great performance, but uh, now that I've worked on more things, I think I'm going to try for a sealed brass breech. And I'll probably go for the uh, sleeper breech. So, if that sounds interesting, come along for the ride. Alright, first thing we're going to do is remove the blaster screws. All right, so that's a part, and uh, I say this mostly for helping myself. The two shortest screws go here and here, the two longest screws go here and here, and it seems like all of the other screws are the same size. Again, not expected to be new information, but I only got into Nerf a couple of years ago. I know long shot mods have been going on for a long, long time, but uh, I'm still catching up. All right. So let's go over what I have already done. 
apart from cutting off the, the one bipod part. All right, what I've already done on this long shot is I've removed, I think, at least one of the, I've removed this lock here. I have reinforced both sides of the shell using two-part epoxy putty because I understand that the, the kind of flanges on the inside of the shell could potentially be weak. Go ahead and take that catch out. When you put the catch in, the spring, the spring goes down. All right. Um, let's see, what else did I do? For this long shot. Okay, so. Man, it's been forever since I did this. This is one of the first things I worked on modding, and like I say, I never got around to finishing it, so my memory of it is not all that fresh. say that um, Tom from Phone Data Services had suggested leaving this lock in, uh, but I think um, maybe I'll end up taking it out anyway because I think this is the lock that holds the bolt sled forward when the blaster is primed. But if this is in, then you can't you can't deprime it, right? And if you accidentally prime it, and you, I think you I think you need to be able to deprime it. So there's a good chance that lock will be coming out. Um, let's see what else did I do? So. I want to say that I did some Googling and uh, I had found that most of the bolt sled cracks that I that I saw when you when you Google, you know, long slot when you Google long shot bolt sled, most of the cracks were right where the two sides meet at the at the fulcrum of that lever, if you will. And so what I did is I took a washer, a large washer probably uh, maybe two inch washer, inch and a half. I cut it in half and I epoxied that washer to the insides of the bolt slip. Um, the other things that I remember doing are that I had um, removed the air restrictor and I had plugged the air release hole somewhere on here. And uh, what else? That might be it. Just basically what I did is the simpler set of mods, but I left this project idle in part because I could not decide on a spring load to use, and I could not decide what kind of breach to do, and at that point I hadn't experimented with half darts at all, so I was probably going to do full length darts, but now that is up in the air. Let's go ahead and take this cap for the Launcher tube off. All right. Yeah, that, that looks like the, sh the stock long shot spring. So. All right. So air restrictor removal. Oh, I padded the plunger head. Which is another thing. That's like I say, pretty minor, pretty pretty basic stuff that does not require a great deal of knowledge. Yeah, all right, so that's where we are now. So I figure what I'm going to do from this point forward is including, but not necessarily limited to the following. Um, I want to install this 3D printed mag release. I may do a paint job, I'm probably going to do a paint job um, we'll decide on a spring load. I'm probably going to try and brass breach it. And, uh, that's about it. But, uh, here we go. Alright, this will be a really quick talking segment since I'm in the middle of it. What I've done so far, let's, uh, for the most part, honestly, I'm going to be following the methodology of OC Nerf, and I will link that video in the description. But, um, I have separated. This piece, that uh, is the, what is that, the bolt, something like that, using a pipe cutter, um, specifically 
this kind of pipe cutter. And I took the pin out of the bolt sled. I just hammered it out. So, no big. Now, some of you who are watching this probably thinking, you know, this, this isn't going to last. And I'll be honest with you, I have no delusions that this is going to be super amazing. Primarily given that I want this to hit really hard. But, I figure it's something I can do to start. I, I looked through my storage and I have actually three more stock long shots that I can muck around with if I need. Um, figure I'll probably end up getting a metal bolt sled at some point if I can find one that's inexpensive and uh, maybe some other metal parts too but we'll see. And what I'm currently doing is uh, I drilled out this black part so that the 9 16th brass fits like so. And I'm in the process of doing the same for the orange bit of the bolt. Um, it's going to be a long and arduous process. Uh, I don't figure you need to watch that. It's kind of boring. All right. It is the day after which I last spoke to this recording device. And here is the status update. Uh, what have we got? So I finished drilling out the, what is that called, the bolt, whatever this part is. Finished drilling that out so my 916's brass can fit entirely in here. Um, I cut away a bit more than I needed, but I don't think it'll be a problem since this just goes over the uh, 1732 brass, so that's ready. And then the other main thing that I've been working on is trying to figure out what exactly I have to cut in order to use this pump grip. So it looks like essentially this piece has to be removed. Um, I've been at it with a Dremel and so that part comes off and let's see how that fits. So I have some cleaning up of that to do, but that's the general idea. This this part is coming off, and this part will go in here. And that looks pretty good, actually, um, given that this is covering all of your uh, imperfections, if you will. So the cut doesn't have to be, as far as I can tell, the cut doesn't have to be all that super perfect. So that's where we are right now. Here is a quick update on where I am. Since I want to use short darts, initially, well, I was looking for a short dart mag adapter because I can print Cathana mags. All right, so this is this is the tungsten short dart adapter. Unfortunately, I'm having some difficulty getting it to work in the long shot. Um, as evidenced by a video that was linked from the Thingiverse page, um, some of the some of the tolerances back here on the lip of the mag holder and also down here are kind of tight and uh, I don't know I wasn't quite getting it so I think I'm actually going to go with a remix of the Captain Slug uh, wildcard adapter technically this would mean that um, Talon. Uh, and Talon compatible mags would also be supported, but I'll primarily, primarily be using Kathana mags. Um, this one seems pretty nice, and it's actually driven by a rubber band, which I find interesting. I guess I could technically leave off just the Talon, the part, Talon detente, but uh, I'll probably just put them both in because I don't see any reason not to. That's kind of how that looks, and you need a pin. And I found that uh, I have a box of nails, and this seems to fit perfectly for that. I'll have to trim it down. What else have I been doing? I trimmed out the shell of the long shot to allow one of these mag releases to work. Um, initially, I was having trouble getting my own mag release to work, so I printed out the My Venom mag release slash trigger guard, and I also had trouble getting that one to work, so I realized that you have to trim out the... I don't know, what would you call it? The top of the shell? The screw hole side of the shell. You have to trim out some of that. Uh, here as well in order to get this kind of a mag release to fit, but now they both work. Um, I'll probably actually end up using the My Venom one uh, in part because with the mag adapter you end up with an additional 
button down here. Oh wait. Yeah, I might end up using neither of the mag releases if I'm going to be using a short dart adapter because then either of those would interfere with the operation. But I'll wait and see. I might. I don't think I'm going to use mine. I think mine would. My straight bar one would interfere. Um, and then I've been printing. Printed out some uh, tube holder things. I'm mostly just trying to get the brass lined up and uh, figure out where to cut. Right now I have my glue gun plugged in and I'm going to fill the dead space in this part as OC Nerf did. So I'm going to fill that reservoir with uh, glue when that's ready to go. Alright, that's where we are. Alright, here is the most recent update on the long shot project. This is taking quite a while for me. Um, in part, I'm terrified of screwing it up, so I'm taking my time trying to get everything just right. Alright, here's where we are. Um, I did some shell cutting, and I was able to fit both the mag release that I designed and the mag release that uh, my Venom designed. Um, however, it looks like I'm not actually going to be using either one because of the next segment. So, I decided to go short darts only. Figured why not. Short darts are supposed to be great for high power springers. So I tried, first I tried the um, Tungsten EXE adapter, and it doesn't fit perfectly, but like, it has a fair amount, since the front of the, since the front of the, the adapter is empty, the, the mag, I don't know, it, it, it wobbles more than I would like, at least with uh, Kathana mags. Um, so, I'm not using the Tungsten one. The next thing I was going to try is the Captain Slug wildcard adapter. Um, this is actually, a, it's an ingenious design, but similarly, there's no, there's no, like, back wall in here, so a Katana Mag has a lot of play. Um, also, even though I thought this, this version of, this is a remix of the Captain Slug, I thought this remix was supposed to have better stoppers for the Mag, and maybe that works for, uh, real Katanas or for Talon, but this does not stop at all, and I don't really like that. So, I will not end up using the cap and slug. So, third time's the charm. This is a remix. This is a remix of a remix of the Tungsten EXE one. This one is made specifically for the long shot, um, and it fits actually beautifully, and um, it has a front and back wall. It has, a, it has stoppage for the... Well, okay, it's not perfect, but... It's pretty good. It has stoppage for the magazine, and this one has a number of alternate uh, release levers, and uh, the one that I chose has both the, 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 the kind of thumb grip and the trigger guard one. And uh, Now, uh, ideally, I was going to use, or originally, I should say, I was going to use a mag release like this because I thought I was going to be using a full-size mag, but if I'm going with short darts only, um, then and I, I essentially I leave the adapter in all the time, so I don't need to worry as much about releasing the adapter. Um, the main issue with a full-size mag, of course, is I am left-handed, and the long shot only has a right-handed mag release. Uh, releasing the mag for me, the stock stock mag um, in this is a burden. All right, so using this 3D printed. Uh, Short Dart Mag Adapter, I will put a link in the description. I believe it's by user Immortus or something like that. Alright, so um, now I've been doing some gluing of things. Um, man, this is a big project. Alright. One of the other 3D printed items that I'm using is, um, these are kind of... Uh, Holders, They're, they essentially they adapt 1732nds brass to fit snugly in this stock orange tube. I did have to cut down the tube a little bit so that these would fit, but now it fits pretty well. So essentially, this this end fits snugly in in the um, in the dark tooth end. It doesn't fit quite snugly in the front, but it's not bad. Um, I will be applying more adhesive and or um, electrical tape or something like that in the future, but uh, it's pretty good. I like I like the fit. I'm also finalizing 
the position of the brass within this front barrel segment so that uh, you know so that the dart can be loaded optimally. So I'll be working on that. And then what else has been going on? I have uh, one of the other 3D printed things I'm using is a small part that I designed myself. Now the the OC Nerf guide that I was following had suggested using an exploder's barrel. Um, it, actually, he had the 9 16th brass. Nested inside the 9 16th is a 17 32nd segment, and then nested inside that is a exploder's barrel cut down. Um, and essentially, the point of those was that the uh, it would push on the dart. It would it would prevent the dart from being uh, loaded from from going too far backwards in the barrel. Um, I only have one exploder's blaster and it doesn't have the right kind of barrel, so I designed an extremely simple 3D printed part. It's just essentially it's a cylinder. It has an outer diameter of um, 13 millimeters, which I mentioned, which I uh, measured with calipers, and then it's 10 centimeters long. And so the uh, that's about how far the a short dart cannot push any further back than that. And then. Um, and then that push will will push it into the barrel once everything is affixed. I don't know where the dart went. All right, so um, things are progressing well. One of the concerns that I have, and this is for optimization, I guess, because I wasn't really planning on replacing. You know, eventually I might have to get a metal sled or something like that. I might have to get different parts, but uh, I was hoping to not replace things if I didn't have to. Um, I read somewhere that the the zombie strike and maybe the elite versions of the long shot had a tapered plunger tube, like like it's wider at the back than at the front, and I think that is actually the case. Um, there is more. It's not it's not huge, but there is definitely more uh, more slightly more wiggle room at the back of the plunger tube than the plunger tube than there is at the front. Um, now I do have an original blue long shot, which is supposed to have a non-tapered uh, plunger tube. So I might try opening the, up that other long shot and compare its plunger tube. It seems like kind of a lot of work for not terribly much, but it may be worth it. I haven't decided yet. I'll probably probably open it up. Um, and the possibility of, of opening that up is why I have not yet um, glued, glued the uh, this orange part onto the brass in the back, because if I decide to go with the other plunger tube, then I shall need to be able to separate these two pieces. But the brass is definitely firmly in, in this back part. Um, the other main thing I've been working on is um, I've been working on the stock block, which basically boils down to... Um, well, that's a lot of garbage in there. Basically this boils down to you want, under a heavy spring load, you want your um, your stock to not collapse because the default uh, button switch is insufficient. So the main suggestion seems to be cutting down some PVC pipe and loading that into your stock and gluing it into place. And I've been cutting pipe to fit, so that's about it. I'm not necessarily filming a lot of these segments because, as I mentioned before, this is not really new or innovative. Um, I'm definitely treading where others have trod um, with few exceptions like the... I don't know if anybody's done this this 3D printed um, dead space reducer. This has been put on Thingiverse, uh, if anybody's interested. So that is where we are. All right, please pardon the 3D printer noise in the background as is a usual thing anymore. I think I'm actually pretty much ready to reassemble this with the exception of uh, paint stuff that I want to do, and I'm obviously I'm not going to leave it all black. Please don't think that I am. But um, I might actually try applying some uh, hand brushing techniques, uh, dry brushing that sort of thing, instead of doing more spray paint. Um, I kind of like the mold layout of the long shot, and I think I could do something interesting with it. So, but I want to test and see uh, how well everything has worked. This is basically what we're left with, and I think functionality-wise it should be there. Plunger tube and the, and the 916 brass and the dead space reducer are ready to go. This uh, this barrel 
with um, 17 30 seconds is ready to go. It is um, it is glued in most of the section up through here, and I used some uh, electrical tape to thicken that for a tight fit, but it's technically not glued to the uh, end strike lug. One other thing that I meant to mention is I took my calipers and I measured the inner diameter of the rear of the um, plunger tube of this zombie strike long shot compared to the plunger tube in a uh, an original blue long shot and uh, they measured out to be the same so if if one is tapered or not I don't know I wasn't seeing a difference at the very rear and that's really the best way that I could think of to check on that thing without like cutting the lip off the front or something so I'm just gonna go with the zombie strike one all right I've been filming this over a period of days if not weeks uh, I don't even remember what the last thing I filmed was, but here is where we are. I'm pretty sure I didn't film this, but basically I briefly reassembled the blaster or enough of the blaster to be functional. I left out a lot of things and I tested it to make sure it works. Uh, yeah, I, basically I manually loaded a full length of dart and I got well over 200 feet per second. So I think that's a victory for now and uh, I'm, I'm pretty pleased. Now I did a paint job on the shell and it is a I did a lot of uh, metallic dry brushing and I'm sure a lot of you will say that I overdid it and maybe I did but I like it I'm pleased with it so I'm trying to go for that weathered look and uh, got some stripes and yeah I really like how this came together so all that's really left right now since it's been tested and confirmed to work is to reassemble it you know, it is, to me, it is quite remarkable that when you strip out the guts of a blaster, what you're left with is not much stuff. You know, I, I know Hasbro puts a ton of locks in for safety, and that's fine, but uh, it, it's amazing how little of that you actually need to be functional. I think I'll wait to plug this in. Alright, you know what, I, I didn't really think about this before, but it totally makes sense. Um, I'm kind of curious what everybody's opinion on the jam door is. Um, I decided to put it back in, to I don't know, to keep out debris or something. But um, it's kind of a pain in the butt how you can't open it by default when it is um, when the bolt is forward. So I'm going to quickly cut out this rib so that I can put the... Uh, I can put the jam door in in any position. And because I'm kind of lazy, I'm going to use my, my rotary tool to do it. All right, so that was quick and easy. I used my safety glasses on. Um, okay, if you hear a thumping noise, there's some idiotic bird, like, trying to fly through my window. Okay, whatever.
All right, that's enough screws to hold this together at least. So I'm going to take a few practice shots. Wow, I see why. Hmm. Okay, that's actually kind of annoying. Uh, that should have probably occurred to me, huh? That's just going to flop around. Wow. All right, maybe I'll maybe I'll steal the the uh, jam door from another one, or I might take that out entirely. We'll see. Hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to take a few practice shots with elite darts to make sure this fires as expected and to uh, we'll fire this through the chrono barrel also because again it's the only uh, chronograph like device that I have and since I haven't have not installed the pump kit yet I do it this with a two-handed prime like I forgot to put the catch in. Yeah. Okay, you kind of need the catch. Let's uh, let's put the catch in. This is super dumb. I can't find I can't find the catch anywhere. It should have been in this bin of parts. <sighs> Keep better track of your components than I do, friends. That was indescribably annoying. And part of the reason it's so annoying is the catch is apparently the second part that I have misplaced. I, I don't know what happened, but I also cannot find the uh, this orange plastic piece that, uh, I don't know, just, mostly it just helps fill in part of the shell. I don't, I don't think it's functional in any way, but it's, I don't know what happened to it, and there's not really any place that it could have gone, but fortunately I have a, a donor green long shot, so that's now the second thing I've stolen from that one, and let's hope I don't lose anything else. Okay, let's do a couple of test fire shots, and I think I'm already regretting having done that with the jam door. That is... wow. Man, I don't always think these things through. <sighs> Alright, I think I'm going to... after the after the test shots, I think I'm going to take that jam door out. Uh, I don't know. I'll figure it out. You know, Elite Darts, this is why nobody likes you. Alright, believe it or not, I have successfully loaded an Elite Dart. I'm gonna fire this downrange. Hmm, 117. That seems too low, especially for how hard it hit. So I'm going to guess that was a fluke. I'm going to hope that was a fluke. Admittedly, it is hard to utilize the chrono barrel when you don't actually have that end strike attachment. One more. That's, that's better. That came in as 178. So, 
at the very least, it works, and we will look into finishing this up because I'm ready to be done with it. Yes, I am. All right. Long term, what I will probably do is take the jam door out of the parts donor, put the same black on it, maybe do the uh, the dry brushing, and not trim the lip off of it. Hey, when you're when you're reassembling a modded blaster, do you put all the screws in it? Usually, I do, but I'm giving serious consideration to not bothering because the long shot has so freaking many screws. So freaking many. Alright, so hey, future me, if you go back and watch this video again, you say, Did I leave out a bunch of screws on purpose? Yes, you did. Alright, so, theory here, you may have noticed I didn't paint all the way back, and that's because I knew it was going to be covered up by the stock. So, I saved myself some effort. And I've cut some PVC pipe. The idea here is the old stock block. Hopefully this... Oops. Um, I don't know if people tend to do this too, but uh, I, get, I decided to give it a try. I, I actually super glued the, uh, the movable, the piece, that's, the piece that's activated with this switch. I glued that in the outward position to try and give it better support. Fortunately for me, the install of the pump kit seems to be pretty simple. Um, I'm certain I've seen a Qualcomm S7 video talking about it, and you probably don't need this as an instruction for it, so... Thank you. 
So, obviously based on where the two-sided tape is, you want to make sure to press in on here and upward in that direction and inward in this direction, you know, to try and make sure everything sticks well. I think we want to try and minimize the gap here. So I'm pinching together. Let's see. So as far as I can tell, you screw the longer screws, the two halves of the pump gap just get screwed to each other, not into a, a nut or something like that. So here's hoping the plastic is resilient enough to, uh, you know, handle that. I'm not going to over tighten it because that would probably lead to stripping plastic. Probably wanted to put the bolt in first, didn't I? Yep. Yeah. You want to put this bolt in first because the middle part of the bolt. Actually, that slides off. I can just take that off. Yeah, all right, we're good. No, I need to, yeah, I need to be able to slide this on, and I can't do that if it's, yeah. Think things through, dummy. I kind of can't believe that this is basically done. This is my, without a doubt, my longest standing unfinished project. Wow. So if I'm not going to use a scar barrel, I think I'm going to go with this. Uh, wow, that doesn't, that doesn't match at all. I kind of have to paint it now. If I do go with a scar barrel, I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this uh, this barrel attachment that came with the modulus strife, because then I can still reach a bit of the, uh, bit of the brass at the front, like that. And that's, that's probably what I'll end up doing, I think. That looks pretty good. I, I don't know. I know everybody says you need a scar barrel for accuracy, so I probably need... I know this isn't a scar barrel, it's a rifle, but whatever. I did print out a Thingiverse scar barrel that uses fishing wire, but, um... Oh yeah, it just goes straight on to 1732nd, but this didn't seem to work very well with the chrono barrel, so... Uh, at a guess, I probably did not string it tightly enough. Uh, but that's just a guess. But, hey! This project is basically done. Wow. So if you see this blaster at a Nerf War, say hello. Um, I would like to give thanks to OC Nerf for his tutorial on the sleeper breach. I realize that if it's painted, and I don't know, the sleeper thing is in some ways kind of silly unless the rest of the barrel is bone stock. The rest of the blaster, rather, is bone stock. Because... You know, you see, you see something like this, and you're not going to say, "Oh, I bet that has stock internals." You know, but uh, I'm going to try firing off some half darts. I think. Just a few. Wow. Oh, crap! So I'm not catching. It's supposed to catch.
that uh, that took a bite out of the back of the foam. So we'll see. Men gun darts may not be the best option for this. I don't know yet. Hopefully, I will figure something out. That felt good. So we'll see. This may have further developments down the line, but uh, for now, I think we're going to call this quits, and uh, thank you for watching.